Hello and welcome to a Powerline Systems tutorial on a topic called Schema Customizations. In this video we will demonstrate the various ways in which you can customize the look and feel of the PLS programs as well as customize the report output. And in addition we will also show how you can share your customizations with others or save them with your projects. To begin, let's talk about where and how customizations you make are stored within the programs. If you navigate to File, Preferences, you will see that in row 7 of the table, in the lower half of the dialog, it shows the schema files that you are currently using. If you have a project already open, you will see a column for new project defaults and also an optional entry in the column settings for the specific project you have open. If you do not yet have a project started, you will only see the default for new projects column. Any customizations you make in the software will be automatically saved to the .sma schema file. Please note, however, that each PLS application has its own .sma file, and you cannot interchange and mix between your PLS applications. Also note that only PLS CAD has the ability to utilize a schema file that is tied to a specific project. PLS Pole and Tower only use schema files listed in the default for new projects column. All program customizations can be made through View Edit Customizations. The three most popular places to make customizations are the Custom Toolbar, Tables, and Menu Titles, Tips, and Hotkeys. Let's start with looking at the Custom Toolbar. If you navigate to View, Toolbars, Custom Toolbar, you will see that you can utilize up to four different custom toolbars. When you try to enable the first custom toolbar, you'll see that the program warns you that you need to assign commands to your custom toolbar, and you can click OK to do that. You can also navigate to View, Edit Customizations, Custom Toolbar. When the dialog appears, you'll see that you have a column for selecting the menu command, a column for choosing which of the four toolbars you want to add the command to, a column for selecting whether or not to use an icon symbol or text for the button type, and a column for specifying the button text if not using an icon or if one isn't available for the command you're wanting to use. By using the drop down menu you'll see a complete listing of each and every command available within the software. You will even see you can choose items that are only in context menus that you'd have to left click or center click to gain access to. Also notice how some menu commands will have a little icon to the left of them and this indicates that you can use an optional icon for the button instead of plain text. If you do not see an icon then you will need to enter plain text for the button. Let's look at an example using both ways. Let's first add a button for the attachment manager. So we use the drop down menu and navigate to drafting attachments attachment manager. Notice the little paperclip icon to the left of the menu command. Then we select the toolbar name and assign it to the first custom toolbar. And lastly, we select the button type to be icon. Now for the second command, let's pick one without an icon and we'll choose the terrain, tin, display options. We'll choose the same custom toolbar one, but we only have the option now for button text. And in the toolbar button name, we can enter a shorthand notation for tin display options and click OK. Now in the toolbars, you will notice that we have a custom toolbar added with our two buttons. If we click the paperclip icon, you'll notice that it directly launches the attachment manager. And if we click the tin display button, we see that it instantly brings up the tin display options dialog. You can create up to four of these custom toolbars so you can group them by different classes if you'd like. For example, you could have a toolbar for drafting commands, one for structures, one for wires, etc. You can also move the custom toolbars around and dock them to different parts of the screen or leave them free floating. The next type of customization we will demonstrate in this video is menu titles, tips, and hotkeys. If you navigate to view, edit customizations, menu titles, tips, and hotkeys, you will see a large table appear that lists each and every menu command within the PLS application you're using. One form of customizations you can do in this table is simply rename menu commands. For example, if you didn't like the sections menu command, you can scroll down or use the control F to find the command you're looking for, in this case sections. And then in the user menu title column, you can enter what you'd like the menu item to be listed as. So for example, we could type wires, and when we click OK, we can see that the sections menu is now called the wires menu. 
Taking this concept a step further, you can customize the program for alternate languages. The software, for example, ships with a couple of .sma files for translations into Spanish and French. If you navigate to Help Download Alternate Language, you can choose one of these files and instantly have almost all of the menu commands translated to a different language. If we navigate back to View, Edit Customizations, Menu Titles, Tips, and Hotkeys, you will see that in addition to renaming menu items and commands, you can also designate hotkeys. For example, as it explains in the top paragraph of the dialog, you could go to the Backup command and in the User Menu Title enter ampersand, backup, backslash, lowercase t, followed by the key command, in this case Alt-F10. Now if you press Alt-F10 on your keyboard, it will start trying to make a backup file. Another thing you can also add in the user title for commands is star 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 disable star 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 and it will not allow users access to that particular menu or command. For example, if I add star 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 disable star 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 to the file menu, you'll see that it becomes grayed out and I no longer have the ability to access the menu. You can also add in star 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 remove star 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 if you wish to completely remove the menu item and hide it completely. With this idea in mind, you could create different schema customization files for different job classes. For example, you could create a drafting schema file that just has access to the drafting features, or an engineering schema file that has access to the criteria menu. You could even create a manager level schema file that just has access to the file and help menus. The last primary area of program customizations are report outputs. Almost without exception, every report generated from the software can have its output be customized in several different ways, and even the very few reports that cannot be customized now have customizable versions in the software that can be used instead. Let's look at customizing a construction staking report as an example. You can access the customization options for reports if you ran them previously by navigating to View, Edit Customizations, Tables. However, another easy way to customize them is by right-clicking inside the report once it's generated. For example, now that this construction staking report has been ran, we can right-click inside it and choose the customization option from the context menu. This will then pop open a table where you can make all manner of customizations. To begin though, let's flip the switch in the upper left corner and just look at simple customizations. By selecting this option, you'll see a table listing out all of the data columns available for that report to generate. If there are data fields you don't need, you can change their show and hide status to hide. There are also a lot of times that certain reports will have data fields hidden by default to reduce clutter in the report. For example, in this report, the latitude longitude values are hidden. We'll change this to show the values and we'll choose the DMS for degrees, minutes, seconds format. At the top of the dialog, you can see that the title of the report section is Construction Staking Report, and below that you can change it to whatever you'd like. For demonstration, we'll change it to be the Construction Staking Information instead. There are also checkboxes here if we want to hide the report subsection from the entire report output, or prevent it from being included in any XML export. If you click on the Advanced Customizations option at the top, the table opens up more detailed options so you can do things like alter column headers, change the report format, or the column ordering. You could, for example, change the structure number column header to be just str pound sign. When altering the report format, you can, for example, double click on a numerical field, like say the x easting field, and change things like the alignment justification or notation. But the most commonly used feature here is the ability to change the precision of the output. Here we have three digits to the right of the decimal point, giving us a precision of a thousandth of a foot. We could, for example, change it to one so that it rounds to the nearest tenth of a foot instead. If we click OK on these dialogs to get back to the report, you'll notice we get a warning that in order to see our customization changes, we need to rerun the report. So we'll run the construction staking report again. And now we can see all the changes we've made. The report name is now Construction Staking Information instead of Report, the Structure Column Header has been abbreviated, and the X Easting field has been rounded to the nearest tenth of a foot. And scrolling further to the right, we can now also see that the Latitude Longitude values in DMS format are now displayed. We hope that this video helps better demonstrate the various ways in which you can customize the interface for PLS programs and their report outputs. 
and we also hope that this will help your use with the software to be more efficient. This video covered the majority and most commonly utilized parts of schema customizations, but for more information on what was shown here and also what wasn't shown, please refer to Appendix O of the PLS CAD manual for more detail, or Appendix C and G of the PLS Pole and Tower manuals, respectively. Thank you for watching. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at To receive a quote for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powline.com and for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powline.com. Thank you for watching and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.